Hopefully we can have Connie join us here as we are recording. Have you always wanted to podcast? So just bear with me for one moment. Hello, everybody. Gonna turn off my camera really quick and mute myself while I figure this out. <laughs> Hello, Connie. How are you? Hi, I'm good. How about you? I'm doing well. We can do another. We're going to do round two. I mean, I'm really excited to speak to you one on one. Thank you. Oh, that's great. You look so pretty. I like your kimono. Thank you. It was actually my mother's. She's had this since I was just a young girl. And really? I was trying to beat Jeff with outfit changes and thought it's easier to just put something on top of the clothes I'm already wearing. That's so pretty. <laughs> Thank you. Do you have some, some Japanese blood in you? I was born in Japan, but I'm of Filipino and Norwegian descent. Really? Yes. With the How blonde hair? <laughs> oh, this is not real. <laughs> oh, okay. I have very dark hair and I thought I'd try something new. You look gorgeous all the time. Thank you so much. And everybody loves your sessions. Every year we've gotten great mm -hmm. feedback every time you've been involved. I get so. a little distracted. Oh, so <laughs> do I. It's just, it's okay because you know what? People like you that are creative, but also business minded. We're not linear thinkers. We're very spatial. Right, right. I like your background. Thank you. This is my daughter's doing as well. She's three and she plugged in the disco lights and I decided I'm going to keep it because it's nighttime. <laughs> Your daughter is so cute, by the way. Thank so we could just so say much. that because nobody else is here. I thought Jeff was here. Oh, we have a few people watching right now. So if oh, you really? want. Yeah. So hello, everybody that is watching. And I, I would love to if I could have this opportunity to ask you a few questions about who you are and what you do. A little bit more in depth. So can I ask a question? It's said to share video. Am I not supposed to be on it like this? Oh no, I wanted you to be here because we yes, I would okay. I would love is that okay with you? Uh yeah, it's fine. I have nobody here right now. <laughs> okay. Well, awesome. Um Miss Connie is the grandmapreneur and she's the author of Write Your Own Selfie and Tip and Split. I mean, there's a lot that you've done and a lot that you did cover in your session, which is available in the replay. But I would love to learn a little bit more about who you are and how you got started in uh, as an author and when that started happening for you and when you became an inventor. How did it all begin for you? You know, I'm kind of um, uh, not the typical entrepreneur. I became an inventor at age 68. Okay. I knew nothing about inventing. I just, uh, re I retired from uh, 40 years of teaching writing um, at uh, Johns Hopkins University and University of Maryland. Wow. And um, I, I used to teach writing and it was really a hard job because I used to pull all-nighters to, um, to grade papers. And so I quit and I thought I would take it easy. I'm up much more now <laughs> with running, running two businesses. So uh, I'm, ha I, you know, I'm having the time of my life. And um, as I said this morning, one thing that um, uh, what I do is not that exciting. But I think the exciting thing is that I'm doing it at my age. 
You know what? It is. That's a beautiful thing because they always say better late than never, but I never think that that's, I don't think that's an accurate statement. I don't think we're ever late. I think we're always on time for our lives exactly. and exactly. what we're, yeah, our paths. And so it <laughs> says, have you always wanted to podcast? But really the question is, have you always wanted to do what you're passionate about doing is, you know, for example, with inventing, at 68, like that's fantabulous. And congratulations on all Thank of your you. successes. Absolutely. You. Were these things that you held deeply with yourself that you wanted to do that you accomplished? Uh, no, I had no intention of doing anything. The reason I invented my product, um, <clears throat> this is my product and it's called Tip and Split. And can you see it? Yes. Okay. And I invented it because I used to go out to eat in restaurants and I used to dread uh, looking at the menu because as you get older, once you hit 50, 55, the eyes start deteriorating. And so I'm sure you've seen people go to a restaurant and like older people and they put the menu like this or like this, yeah. you know, and we just can't see it. We, right. we put on reading glasses, we take off reading glasses, we just can't see it. And I thought that's so ridiculous. Um, I see people struggling all the time and, you know, um, uh, I actually have a boyfriend, uh, Ooh. Um, I, I'm 73 <laughs> and you and, look great. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, so, uh, it's my grandkids that keep me so young, you know, so that's, that's a, a secret, you know, just don't, you know, don't think of yourself as being old. Uh, I, I actually took her out today, my granddaughter, and had her nails done because she just had a birthday. And so I uh, I took her out uh, to get her nails done. And so um, so what the, the fun thing that I'm doing, actually, I like the topic of this. Have you always wanted to podcast? Because I actually just made a cover for a new podcast that I was going to do. And oh, yeah? it's for Second Act Entrepreneurs. Not people who are old and entrepreneur, you know, but people right. who just like quit their corporate job or quit something and now are entrepreneurs. And I thought that that might be kind of an interesting topic to do. Absolutely. And there are so many people in the podcasting industry that, I mean, I feel like Indie Pods was born for podcasters, but also we want to help all content creators. We want to build that community and build good foundations for everybody. And people that are involved in podcasting generally are the ones that kind of want to break out of the matrix, as they say, and quit their nine to five jobs and do what they're passionate about, which you are clearly doing. So this completely does correlate with the name of this. And I am really would love to hear your podcast. Um, well, I'm, I'm really excited um, to, uh, to do it because I already know so many people to interview because I've been interviewed um, for, um, let's see, Huffington Post. Oh, wow. Um, I was interviewed as one of the, um, I forgot what it's called, something about grandparents who are breaking the mold. Oh, amazing. <laughs> and so they interviewed me and nine other people. So I would just contact them to get them on and see what they're doing. Yes. And, uh, you know, and then I was interviewed for um, Authority Magazine and Thrive Global um, and Medium about second act careers. So actually, I'm on my third act now. And and this podcasting would be probably another act. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I just don't know if I have the time. Well, it takes a lot of time, right? It do, well, it doesn't really, because you're so good at speaking already. Mm -hmm. You could do the podcast with or without guests, and that's the beauty of it. Mm -hmm. I have a difficult time speaking on my own if I'm looking at myself. So live streaming is a little bit different. But if mm -hmm. you just take the time to, you know, just 20 minutes to the mm -hmm. side is usually the sweet spot for somebody that's doing something solo, and then maybe 40 tops with a guest you just put a little bit of, of time aside every week and you can get it done. Well, I'll tell you why I got the idea for to do a podcast. And it's because um, I think in June, 
Um, I, uh, I've been working alone and it's a little bit rough on me, mainly because of the technology. Right. Um, I mean, just imagine you teaching your grandma how to do all this stuff, you know? Um, so anyway, so I, uh, I, I was working alone and I decided it might be a good idea to get a business coach. <clears throat> so before I decided to hire a business coach, I, um, I interviewed 17 business coaches. Okay. Wow. Each one was about 20 to 30 minutes and I interviewed them and I thought this would help other pe- me and other people. Like, what do they do? How are they different? How can they help? And um, I, it was very, very interesting. And I actually wrote an article for Entrepreneur Magazine. Oh, wow. Called, Do I need a business coach? <laughs> and the answer is actually yes. But I, I hired the wrong one. Oh, wow. The plot thickens. Yeah, I was so, Ooh, <laughs> so disappointed. Um, I hired, um, <clears throat> I mean, I interviewed 17 and the last one was somebody that was recommended to me because he deals with uh, products right? and he has connections with manufacturers, with distributors, with retail, with everything. And right. I thought he's perfect. He was terrible. Oh no. And, um, I paid him money and, uh, all he got for me was he got me a deal to sell all of my products to QVC, but not oh. really to be on there. Like as a, as a, um, um, what do you call it? Um, An affiliate? Sale, no, no, no. As a, I want to call it as a tornado sale, <laughs> like get rid of them. Get gorilla, rid of them. Gorilla tactic sales. Yeah. It, it, just to get rid of them. They were going to pay me about $5 a piece. Oh my goodness. That's what I pay. Wow. And just, you know, to dump them. And I don't feel this is a product worthy of dumping. Yeah. And especially because I'm not really supposed to say this, but I've got some really incredible news coming up in a few weeks. About my product. Ooh, what it? Yeah. I can't wait to hear it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's amazing what you've done with your product because when I first saw what you were doing, and I love the name Grandmapreneur, that is so unique. Um, that's amazing. Finding women inventors and also people that are doing things later in life with quotes, you know, that's just amazing to me that you're accomplishing so much and you're not done. You're gonna keep going and mm -hmm. And you look great. Like, I can't wait to hear the news for Tip and Split. Oh, yeah, it's really good. It's really Can good. You... I'm just not supposed to say. But oh. one thing, one thing, let me say one thing. Let me just take off this one. Um, I was um, interviewed, oops, I was interviewed in a book. Um called Women Inventors and the 7%, because this guy, Robert Baer, um, wrote a book about women inventors. And I had no idea there were only 7% uh, of inventors are women. Wow. And I, I believe probably very few are my age. And so he asked me, he, he quoted a few inventors. And this is, this you can probably relate to this. This is what he, he wanted us to talk about, how do we feel? being an inventor. <clears throat> so mine is the shortest one in the whole book. I said, when we were children, we were curious about things around us. When does this change? Why does it have to change? I'm proud to be a trailblazer among women inventors and never lose my sense of curiosity. I really like that. It's so, beautiful, short, sweet, and to the point. Yeah, so he sent me a really nice... Um, a really nice, uh, he signed my book. Thanks, Connie, for contributing, Trailblazer. Short, sweet, and to the point. I love it. You know, this, that, that's what oh. I do. So it's, why, why go on and on? That's, yes. that's how I feel. And I feel that's that's part of my, my um, uh, what I have going for me, because I really feel that uh, even if you're old, you can still have curiosity and I think you could probably tell that I still feel young. 
Yes. 73 and, years old. And it goodness. shows, it shows on your face. Like you do not look, you know, and then it's supposed to, it is a compliment in my, in my eyes, but also I, I don't want to. I actually offensive. love being the, the sage. It's beautiful. Yeah. I, I actually love being this age because um, I feel like I'm trying to be um, a trailblazer for other people my age. Yes. That we don't have to do <clears throat> what society expects of us. Right. You know, so uh, so I did that. Uh, <clears throat> so I, I have so I so I hired this this business coach who wanted me to get rid of it. And I'm so glad I didn't because my new opportunity is amazing. Well, so I don't I think the people who I, who I, uh, who are going to find out if I say it publicly, oh, I shouldn't say it. Okay. No, no, don't get in trouble. <laughs> I, Cause I don't, I don't want to get in trouble, but I have no. something so amazing. And then um, <clears throat> I put my product on. So what I'm working on uh, my pitch, you know, my little pitch. For this, so what it does, it, it has a magnifier, so you can read the small print. It has a, a light that's not that's much more discreet than the the flashlight on the phone, and it can also figure out a tip and split the bill in three seconds. So I love this because a lot of people, um, I'll tell you, I had Thanksgiving dinner, uh, you know, like last week or whatever it was, and I had. One person who came over to dinner, I had a very small group, like like eight people. One guy was sitting there on his smartphone through the Thanksgiving dinner. And I asked him, it was kind of rude to me because right. I spent the whole day cooking this really gorgeous turkey. And um, so a lot of people my age don't like people to, to have the smartphone. So if you bring your phone to do the apps on the phone, you're going to start checking your mails, your, your oh, texts yeah. and, and the pictures and all that stuff. That's what this guy, one guy was doing. So, um, uh, besides Not letting the, in the moment, that, yeah, besides the fact that, uh, uh, I don't know how to use all of the apps, you know, to figure out all that stuff, you know? So my mm -hmm. thing has no apps. So I like it. And That's I, good. one of the things that I do is I do things for, uh, this is an invention, obviously, for older people. And so I'm an older people, <laughs> an older person who invents for older people. And you know what? I think it's fabulous and amazing what you are doing. And I really am Thank excited you. to see where Thank you go you. in the future. I so, was going to ask you, it, would it be all right if I let you kind of take over and do a round two of your presentation? Well, I... Sure head to the main stage really quick. Sure, 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 sure. Oh, so there are some people there? Yes, so, well, um, you're you're here and there are people watching right here. So you don't okay. have to go anywhere else. The okay, only thing is, unfortunately, I have to I have to go to the other stage. Well, I'm glad I'm here then. Okay, and I'm glad Thank you got me on stage so I can um, uh, do that. Okay, so um, uh, you what, what I really talked about was... Um, how to get free publicity. And I think this is very good for the people you have in this uh, in this event because podcasters want publicity. Uh, musicians, singers, comedians, we all want publicity. Why? So that people will know about us. Exactly. So, um, <clears throat> and that's uh, so perfect. You, you can leave whenever you want. <laughs> okay. Connie, thank you so much, sure. Ms. Connie. I really sincerely appreciate you, and I look forward to I love to you, it. by the way. I think I you're so you amazing. Guys. Thank you so much. You are. You are what I aspire to be like in 10 years. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Maybe thank you. maybe 40 years. <laughs> and maybe, you know what, depending on how my life goes, maybe. But you know what? It, it doesn't matter because our hearts know where we, where we need to be. So. Right. And when you do something like you're doing... Which is totally like you you would have never thought about that like ten years ago, right? Thank you. Yeah, doing no, what you're doing, absolutely. And it not. just you just jumped at it, you know. And that's what I think is a really good thing to do when you have some something that you're passionate about. Just go all in, even if people don't show up. That's okay? right. That's right. Well, thank you so much, okay, Connie, go, for being go here. Away. So I'll okay. talk a little bit. 
Okay, I'll be back. Bye, Connie. Okay. <clears throat> Bye. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna talk a little bit. I talked this morning, um, and um, uh, I'm gonna talk again because I think this is so valuable, and I want to talk about getting free publicity because uh, uh, PR, which is publicity, is so important um, uh, nowadays. And um, I'm not really dressed for this, but anyway, <laughs> um, what happened is I I became an inventor. <laughs> And when you're an inventor, you want people to know about what you invented so that they'll buy it. When you're a podcaster, you want people to know about it so they'll listen to you. When you're a comedian, you want people to know about you so you won't be performing to an empty room. So <clears throat> how do you get publicity? Well, what I did <clears throat> was um, I hired a publicist. And uh, I actually hired one publicist and another one. And neither one of them got me anything. So um, I, I was really disappointed because they charged a lot of money and I was willing to pay because I wanted publicity. They got absolutely nothing for me. So <clears throat> I got my own publicity. I learned how to do it. And that's what I'll help you with. And I actually, <clears throat> I'm a former writing teacher. So this was a pretty, a real no brainer for me. I wrote a book. And the book is called How I Got My Product on QVC, The Today Show, The View, and more in my retirement. Okay? By me. Okay? So I wanted to talk to people about how you can get public publicity. And you might think, well, I need publicity, but it's actually a two-way street because media people need you just as much as you need them. So it's mutually um, beneficial uh, to, to people. So um, uh, why, why is it good? Well, it's good for them because they, they're on the air all the time and they have to have interesting stories to tell. And uh, you want to get a story about you to increase, to grow your brand. So um, uh, this is all about reputation. So I understand <laughs> that when you want to get on media, they need somebody uh, who's interesting. They want to they want to have somebody interesting on their show. Well, I don't really consider myself interesting. The only thing I really consider interesting about me is my age, because I'm 73 years old, and uh, not many people like me go on Clubhouse and Instagram and uh, LinkedIn and do those kind of things, which are necessary to get your name out there. So I think that's the interesting thing about me. So I actually, um, <coughs> <coughs> since I'm a retired writing teacher, I try all kinds of avenues to get my name out there. And one thing that I did was I wrote an article for Entrepreneur Magazine, and it was six reasons why entrepreneurship or why retirees should consider entrepreneurship. Okay. So I wrote, the, I wrote an article and somehow uh, <clears throat> it was my first article I ever wrote for entrepreneur magazine and they accepted me. So, um, and I live by what I wrote because uh, one of the things that I wrote about when you're older, uh, you, you are able to do everything you do out of passion not not so much money. I don't really care about the money. I would like to have the money just to order more products or maybe to hire a staff or something like that. But um, uh, basically, I'm doing this for passion because my children are all grown up. They're past college age. Uh, they all have their own lives, so I don't have to support them, and they don't have to support me. So um, I so that's that's what I wrote in the article. We are doing this out of passion rather than for financial success. So um, so I wrote that article and um, it's gotten me a little bit of publicity. Actually, it got me a second article in Entrepreneur Magazine and it got me in some other magazines. So how do you do this? <coughs> well, um, I'm just speaking off the cuff. One of the ways that I got most of my um, publicity was through... Um, a newsletter called Harrow, that's H-A-R-O. 
Now, Harrow <clears throat> puts out newsletters three times a day, once at six in the morning, once at around noon, and another one at around 3.30 or 4 in the afternoon. And um, what they do is, it, it, Harrow is called Help a Reporter Out. Uh, reporters have to do stories, They're, or they have to do news shows, or they have to do um, podcasts, or they have to do... Um, something on TV or they have to do, you know, so many different things. And they might want to interview somebody who's an expert in that field. So they'll say, I need somebody <laughs> to talk about um, what to do uh, uh, when you're retired. Okay. So I actually found so many, so many people from Haro, H-A-R-O, that it got me started on getting publicity. And that is free, totally free. I actually got on um, uh, a few segments uh, for holiday uh, gift guides um, for my invention. One of them was uh, they had a segment about holiday gift guides. And then they had a little part of it about how to get something for for uh, grandma who has everything and and is so hard to please. So the, so the woman, um, I think her name was Donna Buzo, she, uh, she talked about my product, which is Tip and Split. And um, <clears throat> Tip and Split is for people who get like over 55 and we cannot read the small print on the menu or the bill. So I have this product that I invented at age 68 and it's got a magnifying glass so you can read the small print it's got a light on the back, so uh, so you can so most res restaurants are dark, and it's um, it can also figure out a tip and split the bill in three seconds. And this is for people who don't really want to bring a smartphone to the restaurant; they want to enjoy the conversation with with uh, their their guests. So so I love my invention, and uh, um, I got it on so many gift guides because it's very unique. I'm surprised nobody else ever invented it. But people do have smartphones. But um, this this one is so so tiny. And uh, what you can do with mine is you can see, like this one, you can actually bring to a restaurant and you can stick it in your skinny jeans. Um, here's my iPhone that I just got. And look at the difference in size. And this this one is actually four times heavier than this one. This one you can carry around and stick in your jeans. This one, you are certainly certainly not going to leave it at the table because everybody wants to steal it. So I, I actually love my invention. So uh, <clears throat> when I, uh, I just, I used to have a, a small smartphone, a, a iPhone 7, and uh, that was, that was manageable, my, but this one is so heavy, my goodness. So uh, when I'm going to pitch my product, I'm going to wear some skinny jeans and fit this in the jeans. Okay. I don't know if you can tell the size, but here's my hand. Okay. So this, this is my invention. So I needed publicity for it. So I got publicity. So my first, my first way of getting publicity was on Hero. So if anybody's not on Hero, sign up for it. You get three emails uh, a day, three emails a day from them. And uh, sometimes it's monotonous to go through all of them, but you know you may just find something that uh, that appeals to you. <laughs> For example, I went to a um, uh, a meeting um, about three weeks ago, and I met this woman, and she's like she does things about pelvic exercises, and it was so funny because I got her card because I liked her, and. Um, I saw something on Harrow and it said, we need to talk to experts about what to do for your pelvis, you know, as you get older. So I emailed her that article and I emailed, um, I have another friend who's a, a patent attorney and they were looking at people who are lawyers and what they do to attract customers. And my friend is an incredible patent attorney. She's not mine. I met her on LinkedIn, but I, I love the daylights out of her. So I sent her the information about that article. But uh, so maybe it's monotonous to read all of them, but it takes you probably about three minutes to just look through them. 
and three minutes in case you get a hit. That's absolutely wonderful. So uh, another way to um, <clears throat> another way to find um, people for publicity is to go on LinkedIn. And uh, LinkedIn um, is absolutely incredible. So I've been I've been trying to search on uh, LinkedIn for um, <clears throat> people who work with AARP because that's my age. And I would love to submit an article to AARP. So far, they haven't said anything, but I, I don't give up. Um, that's one of the things about publicity. You're going to get so many no's, but try and turn the no's into a yes. Okay? And it's always possible to do that. And, uh, you know, just don't get discouraged. Just keep going. All you need is one. And when you get one, um, one piece of press, you'll get more. Because um, like on my website, I have like about six different um, places, media outlets that I appear on. So anyway, so I'm, uh, I'm so excited to share all my tips. So I go on LinkedIn and uh, what you should do is find people who you might be interested. Say, I'd love to, you know, I like, you tell them you like this post that they made. You know, don't go just right at out and say, would you, would you uh, interview me? Would you uh, put me on your TV show? Would you do this? Would you do that? Don't do that. But they will get to know you if, uh, if you like their comments, their posts. So, um, so I think LinkedIn is wonderful. Um, <clears throat> also, Instagram is wonderful. So uh, I don't really know how to do it very well, mainly because uh, I grew up um, with a typewriter way before they had computers. So I had such a hard time figuring out how to put a post from my phone onto Instagram. So I, I tried and I, I actually found you can do it from the computer, but this was my first person I hired. I hired a VA who does all my Instagram posts for me and she's absolutely wonderful. And um, <clears throat> every time I get some pub uh, publicity, she posts it on my Instagram. So I'm trying to get known. So that's, that's, uh, that's LinkedIn. You can also, um, uh, you can also use Twitter. All of the journalists are on Twitter, all of them. So what you can do is you can go on Twitter and find a few people who, um, uh, who cover stories that might be interesting about you. So actually Harrow that I mentioned has a, uh, uh, an account on Twitter and it's called um, twitter.com slash Harrow. So you can actually see what they're looking for on Twitter also, but they have another special Harrow has something else on Twitter and they have something called URG Harrow. And that means they need something urgently like they're writing a story or they're doing a TV show and they need somebody urgently. So you have to be ready to go um, urgently. For example, like I was not planning to do this. <laughs> uh, I don't even have any lipstick on and I'm wearing such crappy clothes. I'm going to take this thing off. I just came in from outside. Um, but you have to be ready to go if you want, if you want to, uh, to be on this TV show or whatever it is you want to be on. So, so Twitter is wonderful. So they have that thing called URG, wait, twitter.com slash URG Harrow. So I would go at that. Let me look at some of the other things that, that um, I can talk about. Um, uh, okay, LinkedIn, I said Instagram. Um, uh, another thing people like if they want to interview you is um, they like if you you give back. So one thing that I did when early on when I invented my tip and split, that's, that's this, is uh, I decided I wanted to give back. So I, uh, I found this organization, Macular Degeneration or Foundation. I don't have it, but apparently it's pretty serious. People can't, they start losing their eyesight uh, at different ages. And so what I do is I donate tip and splits to uh, the Macular Degeneration Foundation. And what they did, I was actually their first blog post. This is about three years ago. 
And what they did is they said, anybody who posts something uh, about our site and has a question, they can have a free tip and split. So I love that. And I think people like it. So if, if you can find something to, to support, because everybody supports cancer. Uh, right now, everybody's supporting, a lot of people are supporting Parkinson's disease because of Michael, uh, Michael uh, J. Fox has it. Uh, <clears throat> um, but nobody really talks about macular degeneration. So even though I don't have it, I think it's, it's wonderful. So um, what are some other things that you can do? Um, okay, so you can also um, go to Google Alerts, google.com slash alerts. And what I do is I, I post, um, I, I search, I, you can have different categories. I have about five categories, like looking for podcast guests, okay? And if I see somebody looking for somebody, I'll look at it and see if I'm a good fit or looking for speakers about aging because I'm perfect for that because I'm 73 years old and not afraid to say it. Okay. And um, so I have a Google alert for that. I also have a Google alert for um, inventions. You never know what's going to come up. I don't look at it enough. I get so many of those. Uh, but I do have about five things. So Google Alerts are a way for you to find out how to get publicity or contests. I, I have something called product contests. So I see if there's a contest coming up, maybe I can apply for it. So Google Alerts are wonderful. Um, there's, uh, let me see what else I have here. <clears throat> um, oh. When you're going to, um, uh, what you have to do, when you find somebody that's in a good field. Now, how do you find somebody in a field that's relevant to you? Well, if you're a podcaster, I'm sure there's a trade a trade show or in a trade magazine for podcasters. Look at the people who write for that and pitch them to them. Because wouldn't you like to be in their magazine? Or wouldn't you like to pitch to... Um, Who's, I can't remember the man, uh, Ulcer, Steve Ulcer or something. He's like really big in, in um, podcasting and Dave Ramsey. Um, if they're looking, if they do a show on a topic that's your field, you might want to make a comment on their podcast and say, I love this. And then, you know, keep commenting. And one day you might say, would you be interested in, in, uh, in this topic? So, uh, so that's really good because you, you, uh, you're being sincere because you're finding people and they actually need people. All these people who are doing podcasts need people. Now, if you're going to the real high end, I guess they've got a really long list of people, but um, you can also, um, uh, what you have to do is you have to, uh, when you want to pitch, you have to do something that's newsworthy. And by newsworthy, it's something that somebody might want to talk about. Um, for example, if you're giving an award for something, you might want to tell some journalist about the award that you're offering or something trendy. Um, it's kind of too late to talk about COVID, but I'm sure people are still doing it. Um, <laughs> there's also a calendar called the non-traditional calendar. And in this calendar, every day is a day for something like one day is uh, you know, maybe take your child to school day. Another day might might be eat a donut day. Another day might be um, uh, pay forward day or whatever it is. Um, there's a day for everything. Now, the days that I usually pitch to, although I've been a little bit uh, lax in it, uh, are like senior citizens day or uh, grandparents day. Um <clears throat> I did pitch something for Grandparents Day for the Huffington Post. They were looking for people, um, and they included me in an article about 10 grandparents who are breaking the mold. I love that. You know, that was great for me, and it was great for them, because I think I am breaking the mold. So I might not be so exciting, but it's interesting, and I know where I can go. So what you have to do is you have to find out uh, – <clears throat> who to contact. <clears throat> now, one thing that's very easy 
is you can go to Google and you can say, Google, who is looking, who writes stories about uh, comedians uh, over the age of 40? You know, and they'll give you a list. Or Google, where can I find uh, a trade show, well, the, a, a trade journal for podcasters? You know, just do a Google search. I mean, this can take a lot of time, but it's also fun. And actually, as I was preparing for this, I started thinking, my goodness, I have to start revamping my searches, um, you know, uh, how to get publicity. So um, uh, non-traditional ho holidays, they have like uh, Better Business Communication Day, National Simplify Your Life Week Day, Random Apps Acts of Kindness Day, Business Women's Day, Service Week, Customer Service Week, Relaxation Day. So come, so go through this. You can do a Google search, non-traditional holidays, and you'll see every day. And you could probably think of um, <laughs> of a day. Now, I November we just passed was a month of gratitude. So I actually um, uh, pitched some people about gratitude and I wanted to, I actually um, didn't pitch as much as I posted about gratitude, especially to grandparents um, who raised you, parents and grandparents who raised you and how about giving them some gratitude, okay? So I actually love finding new angles for pitches. So actually I pitched somebody um, for about, Two months. Finally, she chose something um, uh, that she wanted me to talk about. She liked my ideas. Uh, I wanted to pitch about uh, retirees and entrepreneurship, but she said, we have somebody doing that already. Well, I'm sure they do, um, but I don't think anybody's as, as entrepreneurial at my age as I am. But anyway, we came up with something very good. And um, <clears throat> my new project is uh, called Write Your Selfie. And I'm helping people who are older uh, write their life story to pass down to their children, grandchildren, and hopefully great-grandchildren because everybody wants to be remembered. And uh, th they will only be remembered if we tell them about us and our ancestry. So what I'm really trying to do, I'm, I'm trying to... Uh, to get the word out about this, but people my age don't really go on, on uh, Instagram, you know, to see my posts. So I'm trying to appeal to their children, their adult children. So if you're like 40 years old and you have a, a mom who's like 60 or 70 uh, or a grandparent, you might want to consider writing their book, their life story uh, with them. And uh, so I wrote mine. Where is it? Oh, I don't even know where I put it. Mm, I think my daughter took it. Um, okay, well, I don't even see where I have it. But I wrote my life story. And in it, I found out a lot about <clears throat> my ancestry that nobody's going to know after I'm gone. For example, <clears throat> I found out that my, um, my mother's parents immigrated to the United States from Poland in 2012 and they had to cancel their trip because my grandma had morning sickness and the trip that they canceled was on the Titanic. Can you believe it? And I didn't even know it. I found out from a cousin of mine who's, who's passed away about uh, uh, five years ago. And my, my mother, my, my mother passed away about 12 years ago and she never told me that story. Um, uh, can you excuse me for one minute? Because I have to go get something. So just uh, stay there for one second. Oops.
so sorry. I hope you're all here. Okay. So anyway, so so I was trying to pitch this to this woman, and she she's a writer for something called The List, which is I don't I'm not sure it's like a magazine TV show, and um, she's the one who didn't really want to do about uh, entrepreneurship for retirees. So, so uh, what she really liked is my, my thing about write your selfie. And she said, you know, Connie, we're not really allowed to promote a product or service, but she came up with this idea. How about if I talk <clears throat> about um, the, everybody wants to write their story. They just don't know how to get started. So what are some of the top companies that will help you write your life story? So she loved that. And I was interviewed last week and it's going to be out in time for uh, Christmas. So I'm really excited. So now I have a whole new topic and a whole new unique way to do it. Not just talk about my product, but talk about other products that are out there and much more popular than me because I'm the new kid on the block. But that's also interesting. I'm the new kid and what am I doing? But I do I do. Uh, have some credibility because I was a writing teacher for 40 plus years. So anyway, so, so what you have to do is you have to think about what it is you want to say and then find out how, how to say it. So um, let me think about something else. Uh, okay. So, um, <clears throat> okay. Also, uh, Twitter, Twitter. I think I told you they have uh, Harrow is on Twitter or URG Harrow, like Urgent Harrow. They have something called Twitter.com slash Pitch Rate or Twitter.com slash Source Bottle or Twitter.com slash Quoted, Q-W-O-T-E-D, okay? And you can go to all of those and they will tell you reporters that are looking to interview people or, or put them on their show. So isn't this great? You know, like if, um, if I was uh, younger, I might try harder, but I'm doing this just for fun. So I'm not going to try and kill myself to do all of these. So, um, so what you really need to do is um, think about <clears throat> uh, who you want to write to and what you want to say and make it interesting. So I did, um, I got on the TV show a few months ago and my pitch to them was, um, uh, what was it called? Um, tips, uh, tips on being an entrepreneur from a 73 year old uh, inventor and grandmapreneur. And so they put me on their show. OK, so, you know, it, it's very exciting uh, to be able to do all of this. So one thing um, you can do is um, mm, let me see. Oh, OK. Look at look at the top magazines out there and what you can do there. I have a list of 20. <clears throat> uh, the, the number one, the biggest circulation is AARP, which is great. I've been trying to pitch them for a while. I haven't quite made it, but I'm not giving up. People Magazine, Better Homes and Gardens, National Geographic, Good Housekeeping, Reader's Digest. You know, if they have a nice cover like um, People Magazine, look at the stories they write and look at how they present them because they pay those people a huge amount of money to come up with a good title for their story. So you might want to just look at their, their titles and tweak them and match them to what you want to do and find out what exactly what you want to do. Okay. So, um, what else do I have? Uh, da, 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 da. okay. So you want to identify what, who is the on air expert that's perfect for you? Find out, you might want to call a TV station, uh, and uh, talk to the person at the desk and say, do you know who I would submit a pitch to? about this topic. And um, they're going to say, they're not going to say no. I don't think they're going to say no because they need stories. Now they might not like your pitch, but they're certainly going to give you the name of the person and you can actually um, uh, email that person. You could say, can I have the email address? Because most of these people don't want to talk on the phone. 
and some of them get like 500 pitches a day. So you have to make sure yours stands out. So, um, because if they find a good one, um, uh, that's great. And by the way, the person who's the, um, the, uh, uh, what do you call it? The assistant in the office might one day become the spokesperson. So you never want to burn your bridges. Um, another thing that's very good is um, <clears throat> I actually have um, some postcards uh, that I have for both my my tip and split and my um, uh, my write your selfie. And what I do is uh, after I have an interview, I send them a nice postcard and thank them for the interview so they'll remember me. Okay, so all of these things are really interesting. So you have to just um, uh, think about it. So I'm going to make it even easier for you. So I have this book, <clears throat> How I Got My Product on QVC, The Today Show, The View, and More in Retirement. It's all about the buzz. And this is a PDF. It's about 40 pages. I'm actually just going to update it. And if you want, you can email me. Connie at grandmapreneur.com. Okay, that's Connie at grandmapreneur.com. And um, uh, I will send you this book for free with all these things because I'm sure you're not going to remember them. I know there's a replay, so you can you can uh, listen to the replay. But, uh, you know, I'm going to put almost, I think I'm going to try and put, I'm going to add a few more things because uh, I wrote this book two years ago. And, you know, um, uh, it's, uh, I'm updating it. Okay. So give me a few days. If you email me, uh, email me and put PR tips in the subject line and I will send you my book. How's that? Okay. So, uh, what else can I say? I wish there were some people who would ask me questions. If there's anybody here who wants to ask me a question, I would love to answer it. This is my favorite, uh, thing to do is to, well, to talk about publicity, um, <clears throat> I might start having a podcast about publicity. I imagine a lot of people might be interested in that. Oh, one more way that you can get publicity, <clears throat> and that is by having a YouTube channel. Let me think. I just started a YouTube. I know I have a YouTube channel for, uh, I have three YouTube channels. One is for Tip and Split, which was my first product. That was my invention. And I have... Um, a YouTube channel for that. Then I have another one um, that I just made for uh, Grandmapreneur. And on Grandmapreneur, I have um, playlists. One is for Tip and Split, and one is for um, Write Your Selfie. And all of them have um, articles. No, not, they're not articles. They're YouTubes. Okay. So I'm not really that great about doing it, and I have to fix mine up because when I was looking it up for this segment, um, I realized uh, there are some best practices to optimize your YouTube. One of them is uh, rename your video file using a target word. I'm not quite sure what that means, but I'm going to figure it out. I just did some research myself. Then put keywords in the video title and um, tag your video with popular keywords, which relate to your topic. I didn't know about that. And then it says here, <clears throat> you must add cards and end screens to increase your YouTube's channel viewer viewership. My goodness. I'm, I don't even know what those are, but I guess in my spare time, I'm going to start working on my YouTube channel because I understand that's the second most popular way for people to find you. And that's kind of um, <clears throat> really, uh, you know, you don't think about that, but how many times do you look up uh, YouTube on how to, uh, to fix your uh, clogged drain? <laughs> and maybe something else, maybe when you're doing that, you'll look up something else. So um, all of these things are incredible. So uh, when you're when you're putting up posts, it's kind of a, a waste of time to do it all by yourself. So you really need to have some kind of automation. And I actually, the only person I've ever hired for myself 
is somebody who does my my um, my posts on Instagram and Facebook. And uh, I don't know which program she uses, but um, I think there's Hootsuite, Buffer, Meet Edgar. I don't know that one. Ladder or Later, Social Oomph, and Synth Share. See what see what works for you. So all of those are are really great, and um, uh, uh, it's also important when you're posting to people. You know, you like I post on Instagram, hoping that people will buy my product, but I can't say buy my product every post. So they have the what they call the 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of the time, you're supposed to just post like nice things, like happy Thanksgiving, <laughs> or, um, you know, uh, uh, what are you grateful for, you know? And then 20% you can, you can boost your products. So I, you know, I have somebody who does my Instagram posts for me. And the last thing um, that I would like to share is uh, a no is not, is never a no. A no might just be not yet. Okay. And a no could be, how do I make it a yes? So uh, I've gone through this so many times. Whenever I get a no, I try and ask, well, why is this a no? Okay. And um, <clears throat> I had my first experience with that was um, <clears throat> actually uh, when I, I was a, <clears throat> I was a language major in college, undergrad, and I wanted to uh, teach English as a second language. And I was living in New York. And I went to uh, <coughs> Columbia University and I said, I'd like to teach English as a second language here. And the, the director said, well, uh, do you have a, a master's? And I said, no. So he says, well, come back when you have a master's. So I walked across campus. I signed up for the master's program. One year later, I went into his office. I said, do you remember me? And he said, yeah. And I said, I have a master's. So I got the job. So, you know, don't do a no, just find out what it is that you have to do to make it a yes. I did the same thing with QVC. I went to an inventor's trade show. I brought my, I, I had my tip and split, <coughs> but I didn't um, have it ready because my manufacturer messed up on me. So I, uh, they had QVC there and everybody was pitching products and I didn't have a product. So I used pictures and I explained it and everybody loved my idea and but they didn't take me and they said, why don't you come back when you have your product? So I went back one year later with my product and I pitched to the same panel and I said, do you remember me? And um, they said, yes. And they said, I have my product. So I pitched it and the whole panel applauded and they put me on QVC. So I always say, no is not really a no. It's like, what do I need to do to make it become a yes? And most of the, those are understandable. So I'm just hoping that somebody will get something out of this. And if you ever want to contact me, my website is called grandmapreneur.com. And because I'm an inventor, I realize um, uh, the importance of names. So I had my name trademarked, grandmapreneur.com. I knew how I did it myself. I looked up how to trademark it myself. I actually had a lawyer trademark tip and split, but I trademarked grandmapreneur and everybody always says, oh, I love the name of that. And so now I see a lot of grandmapreneurs around. <laughs> and my lawyer says I should go and give them a cease and desist letter to get them off. But I really don't want to go after grandmas because I am one and, you know, I have to figure out what to do that. But I did pay for the trademark and the domain name. But if you look at grandmapreneur.com, you can find some of my press that I've received, some of my media that I've been on shows. You can find all of those things. Um, the beginning stages, I was kind of real nervous. I still get kind of nervous. I don't know why I'm not nervous now. I think because this was like spur of the moment. I didn't have time to think about it. I'm just talking from my heart. So if anybody wants to go on there, um, <clears throat> I would love it if you would um, subscribe to my um uh, <clears throat> subscribe to my website, all of them, uh, because I have, I have 
a zilch of an email list and I understand I need an email list, uh, you can contact me with anything. You will have my email address on there, Connie at grandmapreneur.com. Email me and I will send you my book, How I Got My Product on QVC, The Today Show, The View and More in My Retirement. And with all these tips, and I love this book, and I actually wrote it in about two months um, because uh, I was a writing teacher, and uh, I had so much fun writing it. And I, I want to give it away for free because I want to help people. Uh, the publicists that I paid were like about six thousand dollars for uh, to to get my product known, and they got me nothing. I got all of these on my own. You know, so I'm just sharing what I've learned. So uh, one of the things that I like about me is that I'm a learner, 73 years old and still learning. You know, now I'm going to go back and learn how to fix up my YouTube channels, okay, from what I research. I'm going to um, update my book. I'm going to um, uh, learn a few other things, and I'm going to read my book again because uh, I've taken a little bit of hiatus because besides being – an entrepreneur and an inventor. I'm also a grandma. That's my priority. And my grandchildren come first. Okay. Um, this morning I did a little show about that. And my six-year-old granddaughter, Victoria, uh, wanted to be on the show. And so she kept, you know, doing so many things to <laughs> take my attention away from it. But I, I don't mind it because uh, I still get my points across. And, uh, you know, I just want her to be happy because at this stage of my life, that's my priority. So why don't you contact me? Uh, I don't think there's anybody who's going to ask me a question. So um, shall I keep talking? Um, let me see. <clears throat> okay. I, um, uh, in my book, I have, it's, I have eight buzz, buzz tips. <coughs> My first one was, is an introduction. My buzz tip one says, be positive and surround yourself with positive people. Like if you're doing a, pod, a podcast and you're not making any money, some people are going to say, why are you doing this? You just have to find other people to talk to. I always try to surround myself with positive people. There are plenty out there. And they're all uh, in this um, Indie Pods United. Um, so... Uh, uh, you know, a lot of people will tell me, Connie, why are you doing this? And uh, uh, I, I love it. And people will say, why are you doing it? You're supposed to be retired. Well, maybe I like doing this. Maybe it keeps me, keeps me young about doing this. And I remember my first feeling <clears throat> of being around positive people was when I first became an inventor. And I went to a, um, a conference with, uh, there were 10 inventors and somebody teaching us how to do a pitch. <clears throat> and we, we, it was a three day conference and we, we had breakfast together, lunch together, dinner together. And it, uh, we would sit around and it was the first time I was ever with people who were not saying, why are you spending so much money? Why are you doing this? Because we were all doing it for passion. And I love being around like-minded people like that. So that's my first buzz tip. <clears throat> be positive and surround yourself with positive people. Buzz tip two, be attentive and prepared. Okay, attentive means look at what's going on. Find out who's do, who's who's looking for um, somebody to interview, who's looking to write stories, who's looking to get you on TV. Be attentive. I think I've given you a number of tips. They're all going to be in this book. And be prepared. For example, with this... Um, Twitter.com uh, slash urge harrow. That means they might need, they might have a deadline coming up and they might need somebody to, to write something down for them or to be quoted on the spot. You can't say, well, I'll get back to you in a few days. You have to be ready. You have to always be prepared. So I, I, I'm always prepared uh, because I'm talking about what I know and talking about what I love. And that's what you're all doing. You're talking about what you know and what you love. So if somebody wants you to be on a TV show, you can't say, and, and uh, you should always say, I'm always, I'm available, you know, whenever you're ready. And if they call you up and they need you 
in two hours, you say, sure. Especially now that it's virtual, it's very easy to um, uh, to be ready. You know, I, I kind of love how it is now because you can get ready. So, so Buzz Tip 2 says, be attentive and prepared. Buzz Tip 3 says, be visual. So when you're doing um, <clears throat> posts, find some great visuals. Find some great visuals. Well, I can't do them, but my, my virtual assistant knows all about Canva. And so I have beautiful posts, and she does them. And so I, I absolutely love that. Be visual. I have actually, um, uh, what do you call it, a cell sheet that's very pretty with my tip and split. And it's got red and it's got a video that's really nice on there. That's in my book. If you get my book, it's a PDF and you can just click on all of my visuals. I have another visual that I really like. This is me. I took my tip and split to a restaurant. And I shined it there, and I got somebody to take a picture of me doing it. And so, um, so, uh, so that's called be visual. Um, um, uh, I haven't gotten quite to uh, TikTok yet, and I don't plan to because I have so many other things I'm doing. But uh, maybe one day. Um, the next tip is Buzz Tip Four, and it says be current. <clears throat> be current. Okay. See what's current. Know what's going on. Be current. If somebody was talking about, you know, when people went back to school and um, kids had to wear masks, you might, if, if you are in the health field, you might want to be interviewed about what kind of masks are good and how often should they wash them or whatever. You know, you might want to just uh, tips on how to wear masks by uh, a medical professional or whatever. <clears throat> so be current and um, uh, be current. Read the news, see what's going on. Um, I, I'm real current with this article that I just uh, was interviewed for about um, uh, memory book stories because I searched what are the top selling products to write your life story. And uh, mine is not one of them. <laughs> uh, I'm kind of new at it. So I call myself the new kid on the block. But mine has some total differences. And so I talked about the differences. I never uh, belittled anyone because they're all good. And there's so, so many people who want to write their life story. I think that they just need to know where to go to get it. So that was I did <coughs> about that. The next I have buzz tip five. So I have eight of these, the next, uh, eight of these. And it is be grammatically correct. So if you're writing an email to somebody and you have a typo, well, that's not really grammatically correct. Correct. Um, everybody does typos. But if you have something that's a gross grammatical error, get somebody to read it for you, fix it. Now, um, some people might say that's not really important, but you can't say that to me because I was a writing teacher for 40 years. And I know whenever I see a grammatical error, I think the person's not quite smart enough. So uh, I used to go on Facebook and um, th there's this one guy who, who um, wrote this post about the 10, um, 10 commandments of inventing. And I read it and I couldn't get past commandment one because it had three grammatical errors. And then commandment two had grammatical errors. And I was thinking, this guy is brilliant. But I said, I hope you don't mind, but I found a few errors. Um, you know, you might want to check it. I hope you don't mind. So he says, I love it. Thank you. So uh, so then he, um, I sent it to him. And then he wrote a few articles for some, some journals and he asked me if I would proofread them. So I did. And because it's easy for me, some things are not easy for me. Uh, writing grammar, it's a snap for me because that's how I grew up uh, with good grammar. So I have, you know, some of the most common errors in my book. That's buzz tip five. Buzz tip six is to be charitable. And I believe I talked about what I'm doing. 
I'm I was aligning my my invention of tip and split with the Macular Degeneration Foundation because everybody likes a company um, that gives back. Now that's not why you should do it. You should give back because you like doing it and you want to make a difference in society. That's why I'm doing it. But I think it doesn't hurt if you want to get um, some publicity to mention uh, your charitable <clears throat> uh, foundation. Buzz tip number seven. Oh, I like that one. It says, don't put all your eggs in one basket. If you're, if you're trying to, um, <clears throat> for example, I'm trying to get um, an article published or my products published in AARP, but I can't just focus on that. They haven't contacted me in three years, okay? So I'm trying other, other avenues, and um, maybe one day I'll be big enough that AARP will call me. So uh, don't put all your eggs in one basket. So that's why we have so many different options on how to get publicity. Okay. <clears throat> and then um, the last one is be creative and be persistent. Okay. So uh, I believe I'm in a room filled with creative people. I'm in a, an event filled with creativity. All you need to do is be persistent. Okay. Because creative doesn't do anything unless you let people know about it. So I'm really hoping that I'm going to help somebody. I'm helping myself, by the way, because sometimes we all need a reminder on what we have to do. Now, um, I'm hoping that somebody here will, will find some good sources and get some publicity. And please let me know by email uh, if, uh, if you got some good publicity. I believe my email is, is posted. Um, I think that my... my um, room, this room, they posted me as Write Your Selfie, but that's not exactly correct. That's just my latest project called Write Your Selfie. But basically, I'm a grandmapreneur. And in this one, I'm talking about how to get publicity for free. Okay, so thank you all. I don't know if I'm supposed to keep talking. Um, Tina's in the in on the stage right now. I don't know if there's another session going on. Is anybody here who can tell me should I get off? I don't want to bore anyone. Um, okay, well, then I'm going to just uh, say it was really nice to meet all of you. I hope you will all sign up for my website, grandmapreneur.com. Sign up for my YouTube channel, which is also Grandmapreneur. I also have Write Yourself. I also have Tip and Split, but Grandmapreneur is enough. And I think that if I get 100 <coughs> subscribers, I can have the name Grandmapreneur instead of just a bunch of numbers. So that would do me a favor. So um, let me see what else. Contact me. Let me know if you ever need any help. Uh, I'm always there to help people because uh, I love what I do. And uh, I don't like for people to be ripped off as I was. Uh, when, we're, when, we're in, uh, when we have a brand, we believe so much in it that we want somebody to help us. And sometimes people try to uh, take advantage of us and take, their, take our money. And um, I, uh, I don't want that to happen to you. You can do it yourself for free. Or you can hire a virtual assistant and tell them, look up, look up um, these magazines and find out what kind of stories they're writing about and who are the journalists who are writing them. And then write them an email. Okay, you can assign these jobs to somebody else. Now, I haven't I, I haven't earned enough money <laughs> to, to do that because mostly what I do is for free, um, except um, tip and split costs uh, uh, 1995 and write your selfie is so much cheaper than the other products uh, that help you write your life story. But uh, mostly, you know, this stuff helping you get publicity, that's totally uh, for love and passion. And I love Tina. I think Tina is so incredible that she is following her passion. I'm following my passion. And um, I just think that she is so great to do this because what an undertaking it is to organize this event. I just have my hats off to Tina because I think she's incredible. Um, and so um, uh, I think that uh, I'm looking forward to hearing some of you get your great publicity and save your money. 
don't spend it on a publicist unless you happen to know the publicist and know their work. Okay. So I even um, <clears throat> put in the name of two of my publicists in my book, thanking them. And I'm going to change it and take them out because I don't think they deserve it if they just took $6,000 from me and got me nothing. So uh, in the new copy, I'm going to just take their names out and I'm going to add a few more uh, little tips that you can do. Okay, so my name is Connie Inukai and I'm a grandmapreneur. I'm an inventor and a grandmapreneur. Uh, um, the creator of... Uh, uh, the inventor of Tip and Split, and the creator of Write Your Selfie. And if you know anybody who wants to um, uh, to write a life story for uh, a loved one, uh, I think it's a great gift that you can give. And maybe they're old <clears throat> and aren't so great with uh, technology. Maybe you can write it with them. Because I have met so many people whose grandma just passed away, and they wish that they had known some of the facts about their ancestry before it was too late. So I just, uh, <clears throat> I get together, I have, there are six brothers and sisters in my family and we get together um, every week and have a Zoom call. And uh, we were just talking last week and I found out another fact I didn't even know about my family. So I'm gonna change my book, my not this book, but the book about my life story and uh, I found out that my mother was used to love to play tennis. Well, I knew that. But I have three grandchildren in California who are, uh, let's see, six, eight, and nine. And they're in an, a tennis academy, and they love tennis. And I just found out from one of my brothers that my mother um, play, went to a tennis camp and played against Bobby Riggs. Now, most of you never heard of him because he was um, a long time ago, but he was the one who was, uh, who um, uh, was, I think he was the first one who got the name male chauvinist because he was going to battle, do the battle of the sexes with, um, um, what's her name? Uh, I forgot her name. King, Billy Jean King, something like that. And she beat him. And uh, he couldn't believe it. And uh, he was like, you know, downplaying her so much. Well, my mom played in a, ga a game of tennis against him, and he wrote a program to Rebecca, one of my favorite students. So I'm going to take a picture of that one and put it, and I'm going to update my life story because I think that my grandchildren who play tennis might like to know about that. <clears throat> Uh, my mother was also the first female law student at the University of uh, the Mitchell College of Law, which is part of the University of Minnesota. And I, I love saying that because my grandchildren had to study about Supreme Court justices. And I told them about their great grandma. OK, so anyway, so I'm talking on and on and on. And uh, I'm, maybe there's another show, another uh, session going on now. So I'm going to sign off. So it's nice um, uh, speaking with all of you. And if anybody needs any help, this is my passion. And I would be so willing to help anybody. Okay. Thank you. Have a nice time at the rest of this event. I'm going to go look around myself. Okay. Bye.